Light, radiance, and illumination are all concepts linked in our minds to the idea of daytime. When daylight arrives, we discover that our entire surroundings are brightly lit. There's an extraordinary amount of light, whether it's on the Earth's surface, revealing every detail to us, or in the sky, allowing us to see the clouds moving, flocks of birds, and even any moving objects in the sky like various types of airplanes. The sky is literally illuminated. If we ponder about the source of all this light, we'll realize that the sun is responsible for it all, burning itself to bring joy to others. However, as the day ends, the scenario completely changes. The light gradually fades away, turning day into night. If you try to look up at the sky, you will notice that it is predominantly dark, with just a few small white dots, which are the stars. This raises a profound question. How can one single star, the sun, illuminate our world and make life beautiful while millions of stars in the night sky leave space dark and almost completely obscure? What's the secret behind this? How can one star light up the entire sky, but millions of other stars are unable to do the same? This is what we are going to find out in today's episode. But before we start, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified for our new videos. Welcome to the channel. This is a new topic from Endless Enigmas. Let's assume you've built a new house, and this house consists of only one room, measuring four square meters. You decided to hang a strong bulb in the center of the room to provide adequate lighting. The single bulb was sufficient and provided good lighting for the small room. After some time, let's assume you decided to expand the house and increase the room size to 100 square meters. However, you did not add any new bulbs and relied solely on the single bulb that was there from the beginning, thinking it could illuminate this vast area. Here's the question. Can that single bulb light up the entire space? Can it reach the ends of the room? What if you decided to expand the room even more, making it 500 square meters or even a million square meters? Do you think the light from the bulb could reach that far? Of course not. Are you starting to understand? The bulb in the center of the room represents the stars, and the vast room represents the expansive space of the universe. The universe is immensely vast, much more so than the room we talked about. But honestly, that's not the only issue. There's a bigger problem. The universe is constantly expanding since its creation over 13.8 billion years ago. Due to this expansion, galaxies and stars are moving away from us, increasing the distance between them and us over time. This, in turn, negatively affects the amount of light we receive from them. This is because the light emitted from stars, or even the total light emitted from an entire galaxy, has to travel colossal distances in space to reach us, typically measured in millions of light years. In the end, after the poor light has traveled all this distance, it is completely scattered, and only a small percentage reaches us. Perhaps this explains the conundrum of why space is dark despite the presence of millions of stars. Indeed, outer space contains an astronomical number of stars. Our own Milky Way galaxy alone contains nearly 200 billion stars like our Sun, and there are at least 100 billion galaxies in the universe. Now, multiply 100 billion galaxies by 200 billion stars, and logic dictates that this number of stars should be enough to illuminate the entire space. But, as we can see, space is neither illuminated nor anything of the sort. So, why is that? Because these stars are continuously moving away, and the light coming from them weakens significantly by the time it travels the distance between us and them. Moreover, the arrangement of stars in space is not uniform, it's random. There are areas with a high stellar density, and others almost devoid of stars. So you have areas that are very bright, and areas with no light at all, without an even distribution of stars and with vast distances between them. Okay, but are these the only factors making space dark? In fact, there is another significant and influential factor. 
To understand it, we must comprehend the nature of light propagation. Go to your room, stand in front of a wall, hold a strong flashlight, turn it on, and direct it towards the wall. What will you notice? You will see that this wall is completely illuminated, as well as the other walls. But what if we remove the wall in front of you, leaving a void, while the light is still directed towards this void? Do you think any light will reach the room where you are standing? Of course not. This is because, in the first case, there was an object in front of you, reflecting light, helping you perceive the rays. In the second case, there is nothing to obstruct the path of the light and reflect its rays in the space, which is also the case in outer space. Space contains a vast vacuum, extending infinitely. When light leaves stars and goes on its way, it travels far without finding anything to obstruct its path. This is because most of space is a vacuum. Additionally, many celestial bodies are gaseous and solid elements, or elements capable of reflecting light rays and showing their effects, are very rare and not abundant. As long as there is nothing to reflect the light and make it visible, you will not feel its presence or effect. Thus, all these factors combined are what ultimately cause space to appear as a dark world, despite containing an enormous number of lamps. Now, if we have a friend living in space who can see red and infrared spectra, and we upload this video to YouTube, our friend would be very surprised and say, what are you talking about? Space is not dark at all. I see it illuminated, and there is lighting everywhere. Of course, we would be surprised by this strange talk and tell our friend that living in space must have caused them to go mad. In reality, our friend won't be silent. We'll continue to argue and stick to their idea. And of course, we won't give up either, and we'll try to convince them that space is dark. So who is right, us or them? In fact, both are correct. Space is dark, and at the same time, space is not dark and very illuminated. But this depends on how we perceive things and on the types of light spectra that our eyes can see. Do you remember the topic of expansion that we talked about at the beginning of the episode? That's exactly what will solve our current dilemma. When space expands, it causes the stars to move away from us, and they move away at an incredible speed. But of course, as they move, they continue to emit light, and it's like a person holding a flashlight but walking away from us with their back turned. Yes, they are still emitting light in our direction, but they are moving away. So what does this have to do with space being dark or bright? The connection is that there's a physical fact that says when luminous bodies, like stars, move away from us, their energy starts to decrease gradually due to the distance. And when the energy of light decreases, it shifts from the visible spectrum to the red spectrum and its degrees. Indeed, outer space contains enormous amounts of invisible spectra. But since the human eye can only see the visible spectrum and has no ability to perceive the red, infrared, violet, or ultraviolet spectra, space appears dark and opaque to us. However, if we had the ability to see any of these spectra, like our friend living in space that we talked about, we would find that space is as illuminated as a nightclub. So from now until we somehow gain the ability to see the invisible spectra, space will remain dark in our eyes. But despite this, let's not forget that the darkness of space isn't a bad thing at all. On the contrary, the darkness of space is what's capable of showing its beauty and revealing the details of the celestial bodies, planets, and stars within it. Plus, we wouldn't be able to sleep if it was all lit up. And this was our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and share. And for those seeing us for the first time, subscribe and turn on notifications to receive our videos as soon as they're released. I'll see you on a new journey weirder than everything before. Peace.